Yeah, yeah. Because, like, like it, it, I guess they have this, like, this theory out there that it costs so much more to be healthy and it's yeah. easier to just consume what's close and what's fast, what's in your area without planning because it's just easier and cheaper. Right. So how do you feel about, what's your pushback on, on that? Like those real world guys that like, you know, I don't have time nor the money to invest in my health basically. Well, the, the, real, the real issue is that they need to change their why around mm-hmm. health. They don't have a why. They don't have a purpose for health. Their purpose is in their work. Like most men, your purpose is in your work. So that's what you're focused on. You're focused on if I achieve work and if I achieve my ambitions, then what happens is I get all the spoils that come with that. And so for men, our health isn't necessarily attached to, you know, us achieving those things and getting those things that we want. As a matter of fact, when you look at it, when we die, the family gets rich. You understand Mm -hmm. that? Like that's a a really scary concept. You know, we work our lives off and work our asses off, but we end up, when we die, people get rich. What do you mean by people get rich? Well, think about it. Whatever my labor was, let's say, for instance, I had a long-term life insurance policy. Oh, you mean- Let's say I had a pension. Let's say I had a home I own. When I die, everybody owns that now. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we don't attach ourselves to our health. As a matter of, then when you put the shoe on the other foot for women, they have to be present for the children. They have to be present to keep, make the house a home. You understand that? So we just don't attach ourselves to our health for that reason. And that was one of your your reasons why you started your journey? Well, for me, one of the most important things was, is I realized that, you know, in changing my health, I was working at Grady Hospital, which is an indigent hospital. And um, it's a what indigent is it okay. serves an indigent pop- population okay. Okay. and black, sh- black, okay, black. You know, the cool thing was like, you know, I was the young doctor at the hospital, and when people saw me, they like, So you're a doctor? I'm like, Yeah, and they're like, Damn, that's cool. <laughs> And I appreciated that. Yeah. And so when people would come in, even though I was a pharmacist, they're talking to their doctor, the doctor's mouthing off. He he doesn't, they don't know what he's saying. Mm. And so they're looking at me like, as soon as he's finished, like I'm going to ask him what the hell going on with me. Mm. And so because I established that sort of rapport with, with people in my community here in Atlanta, you know, like I fit in, indebted to them. Mm. And especially when I went through my own personal transformation and when you look at high blood pressure, it's literally like the silent assassin when it comes to black people. Yeah. You know, like we don't like you can name 10 people in your family right now with di- with diabetes and probably and high blood pressure together. And so I realized that if I could do this for me and then start to do this for my community, I really can change my community. Yeah. And so it changed my why. I think I think. What I've, because I've even examined this in my own life, and I think, you know, wise change when you have children and when you have a wife, and, and, and when you're the single guy and you're trying to establish a life for yourself, yeah. you're, you're really consumed. Your why is really that establishment piece. And I think kind of leads into like part of the other conversation. And I didn't want to go there, but I think I think this is a natural transition. Yeah. But I, I think what happens is like a lot of guys feel as though I have to achieve at a certain level. But right. it costs to achieve at that level. Right. Um I was work I'm sorry, I was working on a theory the other day and I'm literally thinking as you were talking, I was thinking about it. But it's like it's like the idea of I'm I'm gonna ask you a question before I share the theory. Can are there some people who can function off of five hours of sleep effectively? Yes, and I, I say that reluctantly. Okay. Because most people aren't getting restful sleep. Yes. Like they're not in deep sleep at all. Mm-hmm. They're not in REM, I think it was yes, called. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be in deep sleep. So I can sleep five hours. Yeah. But when I go to sleep, you can break in my house. Mm, you I'm not getting up. <laughs> like, <laughs> and not because I don't want to. It's because I'm out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, people know that about me. When you I go to sleep, you can do this. And I will not move. Yeah, I'm up. And, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I don't, 
I don't sleep like I have enemies. Yeah. You see 